you already know what it is it's your boy laid back man welcome back to the big gloves podcast man this is episode two of the big gloves podcast and you know i had to come in i had to talk about what happened this past weekend man we got the prime card man super super big card this past weekend ksi tommy fury dylan dennis logan paul salt poppy man look it was it was crazy it was crazy i got a special guest coming up man you know what i mean i'm super excited about this guest man super dope and we're gonna talk about the fights we're gonna talk about what fights stood out what fighters stood out what was shocking that happened this past weekend also before we get started though the merch just dropped too oh i see look man it's here it's under the video you can go ahead and copy one i'm telling you we got hoodies we got shirts it's whatever and it's fire too you know what i'm saying also where i get the name from big gloves you know if you ever train or being in a gym you know when they tell you to put them big gloves on it's time to go put in some work you know what i'm saying it's time to go get some action so um yeah so we active over here you know what i'm saying also we got um i told y'all to send in y'all clips too of y'all training or fighting or sparring or hitting the heavy bag or whatever we got a reaction coming up too so make sure you send that to big gloves podcast at gmail.com if you want to get your your footage featured on the show man like i said i'm not no expert or nothing like that but i have been working on my craft you know what i'm saying i have been putting in work so um yeah man make sure y'all do that as well that's gonna be super dope we got a, a reaction coming up as well and also if you want to be a sponsor of the show you know what i'm saying you can hit me up at big gloves podcast at gmail.com as well if you want to sponsor an episode or something like that that is available for you but i'm excited I'm super excited. We got a lot to talk about this uh, afternoon, man. I, like I said, I got a special guest that pulled up on me, man. I'm super excited. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into it after this. All right, man. Like I said, we had a special guest, man. He just pulled up on us, man. Ginty. Shout out to Ginty, man. What's popping, man? Welcome to the show, bro. Thank you, bro. I feel privileged to be here. Let's go, man. How are you? Hey, I'm great, man. I'm great, man. Um big weekend this past weekend we're gonna get into that we're gonna talk about all that type of stuff man but tell the viewers a little bit about you before we get into you know all of the other stuff so my name is ginty um i'm a tiktoker influencer boxer you know i i, I started uh, tiktok around lockdown and um i've got like a million 1.5 1.6 million followers on tiktok i mainly went viral for saying you syllable <laughs> that's my phrase and then um, I got into influencer boxing, and um, now I fight on Misfits, and I've had like four fights, two wins, two losses. Um, but yeah, that's mainly what I do. I do YouTube on the side as well. Um, but yeah, that's me. So how did you get into the whole boxing thing? Um, to be honest, I did. So back in 2018, 2019, when mm -hmm. KSI was going to fight, I think 2018, when um, KSI was going to fight Logan Paul, um, I think it was kind of motivating me to start boxing and uh, I, I did it a bit then to lose some weight mm -hmm. but like not for long I just did it for a little bit fitness and um, yeah ever since like influencer boxing started back then I've just liked it and enjoyed it and yeah um, then I started getting myself a following from like 2020 mm -hmm. and then um, yeah I I was like yeah I'm gonna get on one of these shows and my first fight happened to be on um, Ed, Ed Matthews versus Simple Simon undercard on Kingpin um, last year. So, yeah. That was your first was fight like, last you know year? What? I enjoy boxing. I enjoy watching it. But, so sorry. your first fight was last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on it was on Kingpin last year. And you had four. So you four fights in and you started fighting last year. That's wild. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I fought, I fought July last year, October last year, March and then september damn bro you you talking about active you super active in the yeah. ring all right so we are, we are. i got a question for you bro what's like what is the the mental preparation that it takes for you to actually before you get into the ring like what is the taking it in, like take the viewers into the mental preparation that it takes to actually get into the ring to, to know that you've gone to war to know that everything is on the line because boxing you can't play boxing right we all know that like this is serious business people get hurt people get knocked out it's, it's it's a serious game so what is the mental preparation like for that it's tough man you have to be tough and it, it, it's scary but 
I don't know. Some people are built for it. Some people aren't. But I don't know, man. It's just, it's just what you have to go through. Like it's, you know, there's so much that goes into it. And yeah, you, you have to be, you know, strong and tough and be willing to literally even die in the ring. You know, you just have to think, screw it. It's all or nothing. You know, like so. Yeah. But then you also have to keep your cool and follow yeah. a game plan. You can't get hot headed. So. You know what I mean, but yeah, it's it's tough. Boxing's tough, and the mental side of it is tough. It's not easy, but some people are built for it, and some aren't. But it just depends where, as to whether you are or not. So, what was your uh, toughest fight, bro? <laughs> My last one with Tampa. Yeah. <laughs> what made it so tough? Like, what 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 was it about that fight that that was different than all the other ones? It's just the, I think the experience, to be honest, like I trained hard for nine weeks of the camp, yeah. but then he trained for nine months since he got knocked Ooh. out by KSI. So from January, he was in the gym the whole time. So it's like the experience played a big factor and it was just that, I don't know, it's like when you say in sparring, if someone sparred before, mm -hmm. you don't have your success like that, but in the ring, it's like you don't have it going your way and you're frustrated and it's like yeah it's like you, you can tell the experience but it's what it is man you know um it's just yeah i was just the least experienced opponent but that one was the hardest because i trained hard and i really thought i could do it man but i don't know uh, yeah so did you know immediately that it was like an experience level like soon as the bell rang could you tell it was a difference or like does it take a a, a few minutes or a few seconds for you to actually see like okay this shit is different this is a different type of opponent as every second goes on you just kind of learn bit by bit by bit by bit by the way they move by the way they faint by the way they just move around mm -hmm. by the way they throw everything but like 30 seconds per minute literally and then i'm like okay yeah like you know so going into that fight what was your mindset like oh i'm gonna knock him out i'm gonna sleep him. <laughs> i got I <laughs> I got power, I do. I got yeah. power. I was like, but I just wasn't able to connect it in the fight. Like, you can have power, but if you can't land it, it's just useless. It's pointless. Right. If you can't connect punches, then you might as well not have it. So, right. yeah, but um, I know. I thought I was going to, like, you know, knock him out. I trained hard. I did all my runs. I ran at stupid o'clock in the morning, you know, like, mm -hmm. I sacrificed everything. I was so disciplined and I ate so well. I. I didn't, I, I usually drink every weekend. I didn't drink for like eight weeks mm. or something like that or whatever it was, nine weeks. But yeah, I was just so like disciplined, determined and tried my hardest. But obviously it wasn't enough. He was the most more experienced man. And, you know, he had like every advantage over me, like mm. with, with like, attributes in the ring, you know, like just ev everything that he did was better than everything that I did. So hey ho, he was the better man. So so what's the biggest thing you learned from that fight then? You got to be grinding whilst you're not just not just in camps, mm. out of camp. You got to stay fit and you got to keep upgrading your skill. That's what he had on me. Because mm -hmm. since he did the KSI in January, he's been in the gym and you can tell. So whereas I was just training for the camp for nine weeks. Mm. Yeah, it was hard training. Yeah, I was training my ass off, mm -hmm. but you be training outside of fight camps to improve your skill level that's how you improve like heavily that's where you can tell so so that sounds like pretty much just being consistent you know what i'm saying yeah. like you might not have to train like you're in training camp but you got to stay consistent and keep that knife sharp you know what i'm saying you got to keep those talents sharp or, or if somebody if you're not somebody else could be training the whole time and then you just see a, a gap in you know the the levels and stuff like that man so it seemed like you training now. I see you dropping footage. You you you, you talking shit. Like who who are you going at? Who is this person? Because I seen you dropping some stuff on on Twitter. Like what's going on with you now, man? I, it looked like you ready to you itching for another fight. Honestly, obviously, first of all, I'm going back to the drawing board. You know, I made a load of mistakes, so I'm That's just real. I'm mainly just <clears throat> mainly just training and just working on my flaws from my last fight. Um, but. This guy called Oli Ball, he's been calling me out for nearly a year now. You know, he hasn't even had a fight before. I've had four fights. But mm. like, even even, <laughs> even since my first or second fight, he's just been calling me out. So, 
I just want to shut him up, to be honest. Like, every three months or six months or whatever, he would just post, Ginty, uh, Ginty looked bad in this fight, or Ginty this, Ginty that. Just always talking about me, like, making stories about me. Like, he just, uh, he just won't shut up. So, he wants to fight me, I'll show him the levels. He hasn't even had a fight yet. <laughs> but that's why he wants to fight me when I've had four. Mm. He clearly thinks I'm not that good, so... <clears throat> yeah, Oli Paul, I wanna, I wanna smoke him, man. I wanna film oh, the level. <laughs> yeah, man, he's not, he's not even training. He's fat. He's not even training. <laughs> he's not even serious about it. Like, I don't know. Like, you can't just boxing's no joke. People get hurt in that sport. Hell right? yeah. He, he thinks he can call out and talk whatever he wants. Like, tell me when you want to fight. Don't just be like Ginty. I want you in the ring. Tell me. Get me mm. a contract. Like. You know, like Mams, Mams is happy to make it happen. So let's let's go, man. You know, so stop wasting time, and you know what I mean. Like, let's actually fight, or tell me when you want to fight. At least tell me, because mm. bro's just talking mad crap. You know, oh Ginty, I'll oh, knock you out. Okay, bro, I've been hearing this for nearly a year now. You know, like, and I'm only like picking on him because he's calling me out. Like, right. He, he had no fight, so it looks bad on me. But if someone keeps talking crap on your name. You gotta shut him up eventually, and that's so. Yeah, that's how I see it, and and he's just he's just fat. He doesn't even look like he. Tra so, like that would just be a complete mismatch. But screw it, it can be a comeback fight for me. So I'll just knock him out and get a highlight reel knockout. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so this is the last question before we get into the prime card, man. Do the negative comments affect you? Not really. No, it's just fuel. Like I'm sure people are watching this. They've probably hated on me at some point. There's probably someone that has anyway. So. No, you just fuel me. You just made me want to work harder. You say Ginty mm. can't do this, Ginty can't do that. Well, Ginty will do that, and he will. So, you know, you telling me I can't just makes me makes me want to do it even more. So, you know, keep talking. It's just when I'm in the deep waters and I'm in training and I don't want to carry on, I will carry on because of your comment just to prove you guys wrong. So, you know, you might as well be nice to me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey man, I ain't gonna lie. I got the same mentality when people go against me, and it seemed like like it's a theme in my life. You know what I mean? Where people don't believe, or I gotta prove prove myself to people, or prove my. So for me, it's like okay, well, if you got something to say, I'm, a, I'm like you said, I'm gonna use that for fuel. But that shit gonna burn me up. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna train even harder. I'm gonna go even harder at what it is that I want because it ain't necessarily about proving somebody else wrong. It's proving to myself that hey. What you want to do, you can do. You know what I'm saying? The levels that you want to reach, you can reach. But you got to dig deep. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, too, I can't just do this in training camp. I also got to put the time in outside of that. So, I, you I know, you're making progress. Whole, you said what? I learned that the whole, my last fight. So, at least now I've learned it and now I'm going to apply it. So, that won't happen in the future, you know. But, yeah, I, I agree the same, man. The whole life I've been doubted, you know. Mm -hmm. Even even where I, where I first blew up on TikTok, you know, I've been I've been wanting to be a YouTuber or a social media influencer since I was a kid, like since mm -hmm. I was like 12, 13. Yeah. I'm now 22. So like 10 years I was like, or seven years I was trying and not getting anywhere. And like, I was like TikTok 2020, it was starting to like get around. I went on that shit and I went viral. I got like 45 million views in 30 days. Like, Damn. I, 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 yeah, yeah. I was proper like, like grinding. So but like everyone at my college, when I was I was at college back then, everyone was like, "You can't do it!" Like mm. you're mocking me, laughing at my videos, cringe, mm. commenting, like laughing at me, playing my videos on in class. No, <laughs> like you know what I mean. And now look where I am. So yeah, f everyone, everyone that you know. Like I, I remember the real ones from the start that have supported me. Hell yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like it's everyone's gonna doubt you and they don't believe in you because they don't think it's possible. But their vision is so weak. They they don't see it. They don't see the vision I see. Exactly. So, they can stay working at McDonald's or whatever they do. <laughs> no disrespect. No disrespect. Like everyone's got Man, talk your heart. shit. Talk your hey, you know why I say that is because they wasn't saying no disrespect to you. You know what I'm saying? They were saying whatever the fuck they wanted to say when you was doing your thing. They wasn't saying, bro, Ginty, no disrespect, but this is nah man. Say how you feel and stand on it. If that's how you feel, fuck them. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's how I, mean, I like, feel. I don't I don't look down on anyone, but like, do you know what I mean? Like I respect of course. everyone that works and whatever like whatever job you have like, i respect right. it but if, if you're if you're shitting on me i'm gonna shit on you so Fetch. you know what i mean so like if these guys like you can laugh at me but you're like doing what exactly so just right. shush in it 
Right. I respect so, but that. Yeah, right? that's, everyone's going to doubt you. And like, I've been doubted from the start. And I'm sure you have. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just the thing. But I guess people just don't think it's possible. But that's why you got to push yourself. And if you really want it, you'll do it. And that's why where we are where we are today. Absolutely. And you know what, man? People that think it's not possible, it's not possible for them. That ain't got shit to do with me. You know what I mean? So I appreciate that, man. But let's get into this prime action, man. Let's get in. First of all, what was one of the biggest standouts for you? I want you to kick this off. Which was one of the fights that you were just like, that was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Ooh. I'd say, I'd say I was rooting for Salt Pappy to mm. be slim because I've trained with, I like both of them. Yeah. But I was, I was rooting for Salt Pappy to beat slim and you know, he, Salt Pappy was winning like the whole fight until round three. Um, where it just turned around and you know Slim dropped him etc and got him out of there. That that just I was, was that like, round wow. three or four? So, so, I think I think, I think four. Three, he got out of there. I don't know. I don't know. I think the tide started to change from oh, round okay. three. Okay. Like so it was like you know like winning the fight mm -hmm. right round one two and I got used to that and I was like okay Salt might win on points and then all of a sudden Slim hurts him he drops him and gets him out of there maybe round four but yeah that was crazy to me and then also dylan danis how he <laughs> uh, like i was watching as every round was going on i was expecting him to like you know just wait for logan to gas out but he never put like went on the gas you know mm -hmm. it, it was it was like a bit disappointing but i mean yeah he should have done better he shouldn't be proud of that performance but man one of the things outside of the ksi fight because we're gonna talk about that but one of the fights man that i was like super shocked at was on the prelim with swarms with swarms yes. and matthews bro that yes. shit when i seen that i was like what what that went crazy because buddy didn't matthews come in on short notice and everything right two days two i don't know i don't know i don't know see look man i had mams on here and we was talking about how some of the stuff is entertainment. You know what I'm saying? How, you know, he, he talked about the Salt Poppy and uh, Slim fight. Because I was like, that wasn't supposed to happen, was it? I, I was like, or was that? Because he smiled. And I was like, oh, was that entertainment? He was like, I'm not going to lie. It was a little bit of entertainment in that to set up that fight. Because he, he, it is an entertainment business. So I'm thinking, was that, was that really two days notice? Or, so I don't know. But anyway, it happened, right? The fight happened and swarms get knocks out he he knocked them out and i'm sitting there like in the first round i think within a minute probably before that i think they said 30 seconds or something like that 30 seconds it took yeah was you there or was you watching yeah you was yeah, at the fight was. Yeah. what was it like when you seen that bro i, I went crazy i was blown away <laughs> Uh, it was just so unexpected. I feel like Swarm, uh, I feel like Ed Matthews did come in two days notice because um, Swarms' old opponent Ryan Taylor got arrested. It was yeah, he just got so locked up. Yeah, it was just random. So they had to find him a last replacement, and I think I heard that Ed Matthews was like like blazing up, like smoking, like really, like, like they yeah the days before the fight he didn't expect it, but that's oh, why. Shit. But wow. I feel like if. The but if the fight got past even round one or two, and Matthews would have then gassed out. Yeah, he would have got tired. So he he needed to knock him out early. That was his success because he mm. he was clearly not taking it well. You couldn't really take it serious, but like he wasn't in. I don't think he was in the best fight in shape. So like I think yeah, he had to like knock him out early, and he did that, which is really impressive. So good for him. But yeah, that was crazy. But yeah, if the fight had went on for like round one or two, Swarms is obviously fit. He trained hard. So he would have then won, but he just couldn't take a Matthews power. So fair Did play. You? But then also, also um, um, Ed Matthews, I think, stepped on Ryan Taylor's foot and he dislocated. He actually dislocated. Come on, Swarm's his, foot. Um, yeah, Swarm's yeah. foot got fucked. I saw on his Instagram mm. literally a few. His his ankle was like swollen. Like Damn. he um, I think he fractured his ankle. Sorry. <clears throat> Whoa. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he twisted his ankle whilst um he probably I don't know got got his foot stepped on or something. But I saw a photo of his ankle and it's like um uh, fractured. So I think he twisted his ankle. That's why he didn't get back up. But you know stuff happens in the fight. It's crazy. Yeah. 
What do you think? I don't know if you've seen the stuff online where they was talking about because uh, I mean, as soon as he knocked them out, as soon as he knocked Swarms out, people was online like this dude came in on two days notice and was able to knock out Swarms that's been training for for a few years now and KSI couldn't get him out and he wasn't training. He, well, he got him out of there, obviously, but he didn't get him out of there as quickly as he did. What do you think about that? Or did you even see that talk online? Not too much, but I believe, like, yeah, that's what they would say. Um, but, yeah, it's a fair point. I don't know. Maybe KSI, yeah, but KSI did two fights in one night. He was just returning to boxing after not fighting for, like, three, four years. So, he was just trying to get some ring time and clear off the rust, you know. That was that was his first fight back. So, you know, he was just having fun. But, <clears throat> but yes, it doesn't take away from how it, imp impressive that was from Ed Matthews. So, you, you just gotta respect that all i say is man styles make fights you know what i'm saying styles make fights so you can be in there with one person and you get them out of there in one round and then somebody come in and they go the distance like it don't really to me i don't think those are fair points or indicators of who's a better fighter you know what i'm saying or who who has more power or or you know so many things happen in a fight that can dictate what happens in a fight you know what i mean so for me, I just think, like I said, styles make fights. I don't think that means that uh, Matthews is a better fighter or has more power than KSI. That's yet to be seen. But I think like styles just make fights, man. So that's that's what I would say. But I seen it online. I was like, so people is trying to say that this guy is pretty much a, you know, basically saying that that's saying like, yo, I think this guy is a better fighter than or has more power than KSI or I don't know. But anyway, I think styles make fights. But moving on to KSI and uh <laughs> tommy fury what did you think about that bro like he came out in a lambo oh my god that was crazy he came out in a lambo bro what did you think about that what was the energy like inside the arena in that fight bro that was like electric it was so crazy it was so loud it was sick like like lamborghini that's such nostalgia because obviously in like and like like 10 years ago he made or something like that he made a song lamborghini yeah so it's like yeah 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 so like yeah that was that was pretty cool honestly but that was crazy yeah the arena was crazy that was like such good vibes um but that that fight was that fight was um it was did close. it live up hold on did it live up to what you expected it to live up to be yeah i think so i don't know uh what do you think i don't know i because i i don't know i don't really remember i need to watch it back online mm -hmm. but like i feel like ksi got robbed hey matter of fact speaking of that right because i was on twitter man i be on that motherfucker a lot man and um what the hell what's this guy named michael benson um he yeah. he had he had uh tweeted out he said tommy fury's win over ksi has now been corrected to a unanimous decision. Not a majority decision because one of the judges' scorecards was added up incorrectly. His card was announced as a 57-57 draw when he actually scored a 57-56 to Fury, same as the other two judges. So now, you know what I'm saying, it's saying it's a unanimous decision that Tommy Fury beat KSI. I'm gonna say this, man. First and foremost, I got a salute to KSI first and foremost, for even going in the ring and fighting a professional fighter like that. And Jake Paul, you know what I'm saying? Salute to both of them guys for going in there and fighting a real fighter. You know what I'm saying? Not saying the other influencers are not fighters, but you know his levels, bro. It's the reason why they pros and it's because they've been training. It's videos of Tommy Fury training when he was a young dude. You know what I'm saying? So respect to him first and foremost to go in there with another dog. You know what I'm saying? To go in there and, and put it on the line. But secondly... I was expecting more from from Tommy. You know what I mean? Like I was expecting more from him. And the, a lot of the the shots he was hitting KSI in the back of the head, they actually took a point from him because he kept doing that. Like that's something I wouldn't expect from him. You know what I mean? Being a pro, being somebody that's been fighting for years, like I wouldn't expect that. What you think about that? I think I think he was a bit frust obviously frustrated because of how awkward KSI is to fight is because of his style. Yeah. Um, frustration you know i'm gonna hit him on the back of the head because he's frustrated because mm -hmm. things aren't his way like they were meant to or like mm -hmm. he wanted them to yeah 
but yeah 100 percent. it's crazy how you know like it's crazy how ksi even lost by one point to uh, a professional fighter with the fury but bloodline that's been mm -hmm. boxing since you know when he grew up being the nerd that you know played video games you know that's what he said right so, yeah, right you know, like that that's crazy like it just shows if you work hard enough and you know you put your mind to something and you actually like do it like it, it can get you far so just work ethics so yeah it's crazy like he's done everyone proud but you know ksi and uh, jake need to run it i think they both lost but ksi only lost by one point on all judges scorecards so you know i think but, yeah. i think man ksi is a dog Cause when he be throwing, he be throwing for real. He he commits to his punches, and you know that's different. When you in the ring, you know what I'm saying, and you like, and you sparring or you fighting somebody. If you not committing to your punches, you timid, you scared, you not gonna get the best out of it. He goes in there, he don't give a fuck who in front of him. I'm throwing this one too. I'm throwing this uppercut. I'm throwing this shit. And if you get caught with it, I'm throwing this overhand right. If you get caught with it. That's on you. But he's like, I'm throwing it and whatever happens or whatever comes with it, it's, it's, it's whatever. And that's that dog. You know what I'm saying? That's that. Look, I'm in here and, and I'm going to show you what I got. Either you're going to have to stop me or you're just going to have to bow down. So I definitely Tommy, respect. Go ahead. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy's got a chin for uh, taking all them shots there. You know, Jake Paul. Jake Paul was also known for his knockout power, right? Before he mm -hmm. fought Tommy. And uh, Tommy took all of his overhands and everything. And mm -hmm. then... um. Clearly, Tommy is quite durable, and he's, you know, he's got a chin, and like respect to that. We like, we, you know, we found out like, you know, like the power difference between KSI and Jake. Like, you know, what I mean, like Tommy's just tough, so they would neither of them was able to, like, sleep him, you know, because mm -hmm. because uh, they can't box the boxer. They they wanted to knock him out, right? Yeah. Um, they both couldn't, so it shows how like tough Tommy is. So, fair play. So so. Cause I think it definitely sets up KSI and Jake Paul almost perfect, right? I don't know if it's ever gonna happen. I have Mams on here. He was talking about he tweeted like last year that this fight is gonna happen between KSI and Jake Paul. It didn't happen just yet, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's like both of you guys lost to the same guy. You know what I'm saying? I feel like this sets it up perfect to see okay who is the quote unquote top dog in this arena you know what i mean and yeah. i feel like and when that fight happens or if that fight happens crazy you talking about pay-per-view numbers you talking about oh my you talking about you the it was electric in the arena this past weekend i can't even um he came out in a lamborghini he might come out in a helicopter you know what i'm saying like that shit i think that'd be a huge fight bro but who you got if they was to fight though I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's tough. I I like Jake Paul more, but I also fight on, you know, KSI's company Misfits, and I'm very grateful to Absolutely. be on that. So Absolutely. I don't know. I would just have to see. It would be like, it would be like in the in the in the moment decision. I I just pick a person like just before they walk out. Like, mm -hmm. I genuinely, I don't know who would win. I've said Jake, like, this whole time because KSI has stopped boxing for a while. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like, any man can do this. That, <laughs> styles make fights. Like, mm -hmm. the two styles to clash. Who would get the knockout? Like, who? I... Oh, but they're both so tough. Would either of them go down? Oh. To me, it's a tough one, man, because their styles are so different, too. You know what I mean? Like, Jake Paul's style is way different than KSI's style. It's just, so I don't even, and KSI fights way different than he used to fight, you know what I'm saying, years ago. Like he adopted his brand new style is way different than he used to fight. I don't know, I don't know. I, I think it'll be a great fight, but if I had to choose because I would probably pick, I'll probably pick KSI. One, because his unpredictable style. You know what I'm saying? It's unorthodox. You know what I mean? He's not just, you know, I think Jake Paul is more so his style is it's more what is a conventional? It's more conventional than uh than KSI. I think the 
the unorthodox style of KSI, the bouncing, the moving around, the the hands low, the you don't know if you're gonna throw the one two or overhand or I think just and I think KSI probably got a little bit more pop in them hands than Jake Paul do. That's what I think. I think KSI might have just a little bit more power in them hands. And if he was to land clean on Jake, shit, I don't know. It's still it, it could be a 50-50 fight though. It could be a 50-50 fight, but I think it'd be a great fight. Nonetheless, it, I think we'll walk away from that fight and be like, yo, this was a phenomenal fight. We definitely got our money's worth on this one. I wonder who would be the favorite, honestly. Like, I think wow. maybe Jake. But I think I Jake, Jake has fought better opponents, right? He's, 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 he's beat Anderson Silva. He's, beat, he's knocked out Tyron Woodley. You know, he's gone more rounds with Tommy Fury, but that doesn't really matter. Um, but I think the opposition Jake's fought has been harder because KSI's just fought YouTubers and, uh, you know, so yeah. Where, where, whereas KSI's, um, Jake's actually fought like, like MMA, like veterans, like right. people that, like Tyron Woody, like strikers, like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In Anderson Silva, like he, there's levels, like he is actually like, you know? So I think maybe Jake would be like for, like favorite by a little bit, not a lot, like 60, 40, 55, 40. Mm -hmm. But anything can happen, man. Anything. Yeah, anything can happen, man. I think with that fight right there, you're talking about pay-per-view numbers. You're talking about electricity in the building. You're talking about, man, that should be crazy. One one last fight before we get out of here, though. Uh, Dean the Great, bro. And Waleed, bro. <sighs> that was... That was the most entertaining thing I had ever. I was watching that and I was like, Dean looks really, he's got like a lot better and he's just outclassing him. And then like, he was just beating him down. I was expecting him to get out, him out of there in like round two. I was like, well, he's hot, he's done. And he just survives, well, he survives. And then I'm like, okay, well, well, Dean's gonna win on points. <laughs> and then Lee well, just throws back in the last round. And he's on top of Dean. I'm like, he's lost, but this is crazy. That fight that was, was crazy, bro. Because as soon as it started, Wally called him. Boom, boom. I was like, oh, shit. He called Dean. Dean was like, but then he came back and I was like, Dean is a, bro, he's a champion. He's a champion for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't take that away from him. He's a dog, bro. And he, he, he'll get in there and scrap with you. He don't. Like he said, after his shoulder was messed up, his hand was messed up. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a fighter fighter, bro. And that was a great, great fight, bro. That was a great fight, bro. That was one of the most entertaining fights I've watched in a long time, honestly. I was so invested. Like, <laughs> it was, I was like on the edge of my seat the whole time, man. Yeah, that was fire, bro. Hey, man, I appreciate you for, uh, you know, coming out, man, and chilling with me, man, talking boxing, man. Anything you want to say, anything you want to shout out, anything you want to, you know, anything that you want to say before I, I let you go, bro. Guys, thank you for watching. I, I feel privileged to be on here. Thank you to Laid Back. Big up to you, man. I hope this um, podcast does well for you. And um, I'll be back in the ring, hopefully early next year, hopefully against Dolly Ball, whenever he wants it. If he wants it even two weeks, I'll fight him Oh, shit. Weeks. If he, wants, if he wants to fight or if or if i'm like fighting in march next year in six months let it be but i'll be back in the ring before you know it okay i'll be back um so yeah hope you guys are excited we're gonna put in the work we're gonna work on my floors um, that's real it's just grinding season so yeah those those improvements those uh floors that i um showed in my last fight against temper they will no longer be i'm gonna like i'm seriously like i've i've got so many comments i'm i'm like so like fired up like fueled up to like work 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 get better and um you're gonna see a different fire next time so be ready and um yeah it's been a pleasure to be on this so thank you laid back big ups to you man so, absolutely Thank hey you, man, man, I appreciate you, bro. Like I, I wished you success before the last fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm pulling for you, man. I definitely love your maturity. I love that you like I'm going back to the drawing board. You know what I'm saying? It's time for me to to work on my flaws. And I was talking, man. See, you should have checked out the first episode because me and Mams talked about your fight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we talked about your say? we talked about your fight, and um, I, you got to go watch it. But we we talked about it, and I told him I was like. But that doesn't make, you know, because uh, I know people was talking about your performance and I was like, that doesn't make him a horrible fighter. I was like, if he go back to the drawing board and he go back and he works on his craft and he go back. And I was like, that's the one thing I love about boxing. 
that if you you go back and you put in the work you can get better you know what i'm saying like you're not where you're going to be at two months from now two weeks from now two days from now if you're putting in the work so the fact to hear you saying like yo I'm going back to the drawing board. The flaws that I had in my last fight, you're not going to see those no more. I'm going to keep improving. I'm going to keep going. And I like to hear that, bro. That that shows a lot of maturity and it shows a lot of growth in you. And it shows that, hey, this is not something that I'm just doing for play play. Like, I want to come in here and I want to make a name for myself. And I want to make sure that people understand and respect who I am in that ring. So, hey, man, I definitely salute you, bro. I'm pulling for you. You know what I'm saying? I'm rooting for you. I'm glad you're on here, man. I appreciate you, bro. And uh, we'll definitely talk soon, man. Definitely take care of yourself. And I can't wait to see you back in there. And I'll be in the ring soon. So that's going to be something to, to see, too. Right. You I say what? To your fight, man. Look, you're going to come out with this W. I'm excited for this uh, announcement. And um, yeah, I'll be watching your fights. So, you know, can't wait uh, to see what you've been cooking, bro. So, yeah, no, thank you for the kind words. I respect you, bro. And uh, it's nice to hear. And um, I can't wait for you to get this KO. <laughs> hey we will see we will see I, I, but i have been training very hard man look man i appreciate you man safe travels back you know what i'm saying you got a long ride ahead of you man and we will talk soon bro be safe man talk, talk to you soon thank you bro it's all been right. a pleasure peace peace bro peace all right all right so shout out to my man ginty man that pulled up on us man shout out to him man i wish him all the best in this boxing journey man this is a hard sport and the fact that he said, yo, I'm going back in there and I'm going to train hard. The flaws that you've seen, you ain't going to see no more. I respect that. And you got to respect that. He not running from his flaws. He's actually going to attack them and actually getting better. I respect that. But let's go ahead and get into this reaction. Like I said, if you want your footage featured on the show, biggloves at gmail.com. And let's go. All right, we got some boxing footage here we about to react to, man. Like I said, if you want me to check out any of your boxing footage, Send it to me, biggloves at gmail.com. This email is from Pog. He says, I'm the guy with the Adidas t shirt. Boxing experience is three months and a half, so I'm not that good, obviously, but it's okay. I'm open for the fans and you to be critiqued and hear some different point of views. At the end, it's all opinions. The guy I spar is way older than me in the gym. So, yeah, let me know what you think and what it is that i need to improve and stuff like that also i'm a huge fan by the way i like all your stuff and reactions hope you return with them live reactions on twitch that you used to do peace fam i might return i don't know i might not but let's see what you got bro like i said i'm not no expert either but you know what i'm saying i'm a little active in the gym i'm a little active in the gym let's go ahead and see what we got man run it okay hands down whoa 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 he hit buddy with the one two buddy went flying out the frame didn't he but you got to keep them hands up you got to keep them hands up whoa okay okay jab head movement head movement okay jab jab me got to keep them hands up bro you got to keep them hands up and you got to keep that chin tucked tuck that chin because when you throwing them one twos and they coming back they coming back at you I, I think buddy don't want no smoke with you nah he don't want no smoke with you oh nah he don't want no smoke with you bro he don't want no smoke with you when you caught him with that first one two when you threw that one two right here boom when he felt that and went out the screen he like i don't i don't know about this one he done switch if you notice he done switch stances look at that feet cross can't cross your feet in boxing that's a no-no look at that I think after that punch, he didn't want no smoke with you. Yabni. Nah, he ain't want no smoke. He not even throwing. And don't be so squared up when you coming in. You got to, you know what I'm saying? Blade in, you know what I'm saying? Okay. The hook is coming. Mm.
you got to keep that balance too. We know you want to land a big shot. Feet too wide. Tighten it up a little bit. And don't throw your head up in the air. Keep that chin tucked when you throw that punch. You see that? You got to keep that, tent, that chin tucked, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What happened after? What happened after? You got power. He respects your power. All I would say is definitely working on your technique better. Don't come in so squared up. Keep your chin tucked when you're throwing your punches. And head movement after you throw. Anytime you're throwing a punch, after you're throwing a punch, you need some type of defense. That's what I would say. But for three months and a half, you're showing that you got that fight in you. You got that dog in you. So look, man, send me more footage if you got it. Send it in. And what happened to this dude after this? Let me know in the comments. All right, so that was another episode of the Big Gloves Podcast, man. Shout out to my special guest, Ginty, that pulled up on me, man. Nothing but respect to him and nothing but well wishes for him and his boxing journey, man. Shout out to him. Also, shout out to the guy that sent in the footage, man. Make sure you send in your footage if you want me to check it out, man. We will do live reactions here. Also, the merch is here. <laughs> and it's icy make sure you cop it man shout out to all my people out there man and y'all gonna see me in the ring soon man for sure if you want to be a sponsor big gloves podcast at gmail.com what's popping pow